anxiety, worry. My brother and sister in Christ, it's the 1930s, 1940s. His name, his name is Leland, and he is, um, he's a sportscaster. He's a sports announcer, and he thinks he's actually pretty good at it. He's got a good feel about it. And then after about a couple weeks on a job, a month on a job, he gets, his boss calls him into his office and says, Leland, I'm a big believer in being honest. You're absolutely atrocious. I got to let you go. He said, man, he said, my whole world just collapsed before me. He said, I'm going to give you two weeks notice. You need to pack your stuff up. Man, Leland is, he's, he just didn't know what to think. He's disheveled. He's lost. He's walking out the building. He's literally walking out the building, and he sees a man in a, in a plaid coat, kind of reddish brown, kind of tattered and torn. And the guy says, um, are you Leland? And he said, yes, sir, I am. He said, well, I heard, I heard you got fired. He said, wow, things travel fast. He said, well, my name is Mr. Fox, and I would like to offer you a job. He said, well, it's perfect timing. He said, I tell you what, tomorrow... I want you to come to my office, go to the Fox, Fox building. This isn't Fox News. Okay, good. As a result of it, man, he goes, and he next morning he goes to the building, and he knocks on the door. You've seen the little movies, the shows where you knock on the door, and the little, the little window box opens, and the guy looks out, and he says, uh, I'm here to see Mr. Fox. Yes, come on in. They open the door. They bring him up the stairwell. They bring him to his office. Teletype, microphone chalkboard, desk. He said, this is your office. He said, well, Mr. Fox, is this uh, like county to county we're going to be announcing the scores or state to state or across the nation? He said, no, to, to the next room. He looks over there. He opens a little shade to look out. It's got a craps table. It's got a roulette wheel. It's got a big chalkboard. He's a bookie. As a result of it, he says, you know, Mr. Fox, you know, crime doesn't pay, or does it? He said, yes, yeah, $75 a weekend. He said, I'm all in. As a result of it, he says he does it for about two weeks, and his anxiety grows so much because he said, I just know, I just know it's not the right thing the right way. He said, I, I, he said Mr. Fox, I made $150. It's more than my dad's made in several weeks. Thank you. He said, but I got to go. He heads off to CBS. They give him the job that whenever somebody's sick, not feeling well, whether it's sports, the weather, or the news, they put him in. Well, I got to tell you, his anxiety grows because all of a sudden people are getting sick. Next thing you know, his name starting to be bantered about. Pretty soon, he becomes the guy. As a matter of fact, he's so good at what he does, even before his shows, when he's at the top of his career, he said anxiety was always dominant. He said, it just, it just was. I just wanted to do the right thing the right way. He did the right thing at the right way at JFK's funeral, Martin Luther King's funeral. Do you know Leland interviewed the Beatles? My brother and sister Christ, he always used to say, that's the way it is. He was called the most honest man in America. You know him as Leland, Walter Leland Conkright. No kidding, really? Okay, okay, for everybody else that has no idea, Google is why that was invented, my brother and sister in Christ. My brother and sister in Christ, man, the one thing we don't have today, we don't know who to trust. It's all about anxiety. That is that gospel. My brother in Christ, how well did you listen to the words? Man, he says there's going to be tribulation. There's going to be angst. You're going to have a lot of... Uh, uh, you, you, you're going gonna, you're gonna to be preparing. He said, you, you're going you're gonna to have worry. You're going to have consternation. My brother and sister in Christ, it all points to one word, anxiety. Now stop, you're first century Jew. Where is Christ having this conversation? He is actually in an, uh, is across from the city of Jerusalem. You see the big massive walls that surround the city. You see the big massive temple. You can't miss it. He's talking with his apostles, and he's talking to them about the second coming that you will see me coming on a cloud, which for a Jew, was everybody knew it as clouds were God's chariot. As a result of it, you're going to see the Son of Man coming. Now stop. He said there are three things that potentially can break your back before I come. He said drunkenness. 
He said, when you drink, go back to St. Paul and the Corinthians, when you get drunk, the sin is mortal. You did it intentionally, you did it willfully, and you knew it was wrong. He said, what does he say? Power drinkers, drunkards, sodomites, fornicators, you will not enter my kingdom. St. Paul to the Corinthians. My brother and sister Christ, he said, drunkenness will be the first step. The next step will be carousing, which sins of the flesh. In other words, you're going to get caught up in the world and that it's okay, that we love one another. Whatever the adage you want to use, he's saying sex outside of marriage is a mortal sin. Pornography is dominant today. And then he says the last one. He says if you're able to get past the last two, the one that will catch you is anxiety. He said y'all are warriors. And you're going to worry about anything and everything. It's going to consume your day. He said it's going to get so bad that you could care less about drunken. You could be care less about the flesh. You just get consumed with worry and anxiety. Now stop. Before they walk off, he tells them one more thing. He said, you better make sure that you can stand up and look at me when I come on my chariot. My brother Christ, if you and I have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, why would he say, you better pray that you can even stand before me, much less look at me? He said, that's because the relationship is this way. That's why the beatitude is fear of the Lord, a childlike reverence for God. He's trying to tell you, yes, I do love you. That's unconditional. So much so, I gave my life for you. But it doesn't change the fact that we're not God. you're not God. I am God and you are not. Thank God. My brother and sister in Christ, go back in history. Go back in scripture. All of our best players are people that can get over anxiety, that had it but still performed. Do you know who Ananias is? Ananias is a disciple of Christ. He is a follower of the apostles. He gets a, a, a message, an angel, if you will, appears to him. It says, I want you to go to 2nd Street, there's a guy that's been blinded. His name is Saul. <laughs> this is Ananias' conversation. N no, no. I know who Saul is. Let's leave him blind. It's okay, okay? He can't kill half as many people blind as he can when he sees. No, you need to go and cure him because if you don't do it, then I don't have a Gentile church. You and I have nowhere to go. My brother and sister in Christ, he gets over the anxiety to go cure him, so he goes from Saul to being Paul. Can you imagine you're Mary Magdalene? I mean, your whole life has been done. Who else has all seven demons? No one in Scripture has overcome all seven possessions of pride and anger and gluttony and lust and avarice and sloth and envy. But yet on Easter Sunday, she gets up on her own. Where are the apostles? Where's Peter? I'm going to go to the tomb, deal with the guards that have had their way with me for years. And now I'm going to stand in front of a, a rock I can't open just to plead to the good Lord who I think is dead. My brother Christ, if she doesn't get over the anxiety and still marches, she's not the first to see the risen Christ. My brother Christ, she is so overwhelmed with anxiety, she can't even recognize Christ when he comes. She thinks he's the gardener. Sir, can you tell me where you've laid him so that I can go and find him? And then he says, Mary. And then she recognizes the voice. And then she says, Rabboni. You know what Rabboni in their language means? Oh, great one. This is why Christ says, call no man rabbi. Because literally it means great one. And you are not there. You are not. My brother and sister Christ, she gets all over that and she gets so excited. She grabs him and he has to tell her, please let me go. For I have yet to ascend to my father. My brother and sister Christ, can you imagine what it was like for Peter? I mean, everywhere you went, somebody had something to say about you. Oh, man, Peter, the last thing I heard, man, you whacked off a guy's ear. Oh, you, man, Peter, please tell me that you can judge me. Man, you, you denied your Savior three times. Matter of fact, every time you denied him, it got worse. First, you just denied him that you knew him. Then you denied that he was part of the 12. Then you decided that you're not even part of that whole relationship, that whole, that whole understanding. My brother, sister in Christ, can you imagine what it was like for Peter, for his wife, Porphyria? to finally get to the point that no matter how much anxiety you had about what people think of you, stop, stop, what people think of you is none of your business. Don't you ever forget that. 
my brother and sister in Christ, anxiety. If I were to ask you today, how much of your day is spent worked up in anxiety? How much of your day do you spend worrying about yesterday or tomorrow? How much of your day is consumed with worry and consternation? Well, let's see. My brother and sister in Christ, when you go to work, you're worrying about work? You're worrying about cash flow? What's the country going to do? How's it going to affect my job? How's it going to affect my 401k? My brother and sister in Christ, you, you ask yourself, are they going to make me get vaccinated or not? Are we going to worry about that too? Is anxiety going to go off the charts? What about our relationship with one another? What about the person I'm dating, when I'm married to? What about my children, my grandchildren? What about my parents? Do you worry about where that's going? So much so that, man, you can't even have a thought in the day. Do you worry about where the world's going, what the church is going to do, where it's going to come, or what's it going to say? Are we going to stay in mass now? Are we going to go back outside? Are we going to separate by 10? Do you have to wear the mask or not? My brother and sister in Christ, therein lies the problem. How much of your day is spent in a worry? Don't you see? Don't you understand? That's the devil's tool. Think about it. He hates you. The very marrow of your bones. He knows your name. He knows your children's name. He knows when you rise and when you sit. He knows where you work and what you like and what you don't like. My brother and sister in Christ, he's got from this day you came in the world to this day you're going home. That's how much time he's got to turn you. He is not sitting idly by. You're the mere mention of your name causes him to spit because you've been made in the image of Jesus Christ and he is going to plant that seed. Why is it that you and I, why is it that we allow him to roam free in the most expensive real estate in the world and we give him free reign? We take counsel with him. We worry about everything. We worry about our children. We worry about our tests. We worry about the relationship. We worry about the conversation that we got to have next week. We got to worry about the job. We got to worry about where this is going. What about our grandchildren? What about this? I haven't heard from my son or daughter. I haven't heard about work. I don't know if I got the job. My brother Christ, don't you see? This is why the good Lord said, give us this day our daily bread. He wants you to stay in the day. My brother and sister Christ, if you're living in yesterday, or the day before because of something you did or you said, do you not understand? It's not a life sentence. It's, it's just a lesson learned. Do you want to walk through life backwards, hitting everything in your path, and then wonder why your life is so tumultuous? Because you haven't bothered to get in the day, the very moment of the day. My brother Christ, you know, we pray for one human emotion. Every church, every hour of every country of every day, it's not love. It's not for... For understanding, it's not for wisdom, it's, 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 it's not for protection, anxiety. You and I pray at every Mass. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us, Lord, from all anxiety. As we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. My brother and sister in Christ, you walk out those doors again. With the same worries you walked in here with. you got to stop. It's got to stop. You're wearing me out. You're wearing yourself out. You're wearing your family out. You're wearing you out. Because what you're saying is that you ultimately have the control. My brother and sister Christ, don't you understand? How many times do people come and they come to me and they say, Father, I can't stop worrying about this. It's, it's on my mind. It's on my prayers. It's dominating my conversation. It's consumed me. And I said, man, you've locked yourself in a prison. And you know what's the sad part? You got the key in your hand. And you're yelling to me, man, somebody's got to help. Lord, Father, help me. And I'm saying, for the love of Christ, stick the key in the hole. Can you just turn the lock? Only you can control your thoughts. So why would you let the evil one roam free? My brothers and sisters in Christ, you can't walk out those doors with the same worry you walked in here with. Give it to him. Cut it loose for the love of him. Let it go. You need peace in your life. Consternation and worry and anxiety are the tools of the evil one. And I leave you with this. Anxiety is not a result of you worrying about the future. Anxiety comes about because you think you can control the future. Please. Cut it loose and let it go. Amen? Amen. Now I've been yelling for well over 10 minutes. Amen. Amen.
There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Please stand.